Guys, welcome to game three between Aegis and Mighty. Each player has a game, a piece. Aegis starting in the upper right hand corner is the pink Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we have Mighty as the red Terran. And this is going to be on Eclipse. Thus far, Mighty has shown that he prefers mech play against Zerg. Aegis floundering a bit in game one, but in game two showing that he knows how to deal with it. Get, a, get economically ahead, have a bunch of units, just basically power through, through pure Zerg macro tactics. Ogre Zerg. Ogre Zerg style. Can win you the games. Mighty not able to secure a third base, not able to take out any expansions last match, which does not bode well for him. Moving into this game three. I'm curious if he has got something up his sleeve, or if he's going to kind of tr transition things back. And also keep in mind, Agistol is still a wild card. He still has a lot of build orders he can throw out there. He still has Zergling Floods, things like that, that are in his pocket. I'm almost wondering if he's going to opt for Mutalus to play just to mix things up this round. We'll have to see. Mighty once again setting up to try to deny scouting information on this front base. This is a two-player map. Agistol setting up for a 10 hatchery. Interesting. So doing, getting the Overlord, doing the drone extractor trick. I'm actually, yeah, I'm still wondering if there's like a spreadsheet as far as when you do the drone extractor trick and you build it on 10 rather than 11, things like that. What, if there is like a bonus on minerals. We do see that refinery being placed, which again suggests that we're gonna see a follow-up mech play from Mighty. Barracks at that natural expansion, or sorry, Barracks to blockade any sort of scout from the actual expansion. Already there. Overlord. The one thing he, he can rely on is this kind of a <laughs> Overlord over the natural at the very least. SCV making his way across. Spawning pool, about a fourth way finish. We do have an extractor plopped it down. Plopped it? Plopped down. Three SCV on gas, so this is definitely going to be mech play. And Agistol, interestingly enough, not sending any sort of drones, not even trying. To get a drone scout in. I'm wondering if that's going to go into the memory bank for game four for Mighty. Factory on the way for him. Three drones on gas. And I'm wondering if we will see again early Hydralis to deal with this. This almost reminds me of I'm trying to remember what season of ASL it was. But kind of the adjustments against the 1 1. Full cadre of Zergling. Again, cadre. Full complement of Zerglings being produced. Six Zerglings being produced. SCV stealing a bit of minerals while inside his opponent's base. And I'm wondering if we're going to see the Vulture to start or if we're just going to see the Goliath uh, build. There's actually, if you want to see a interesting mech build, there is the 80s mullet build. Shout out to 80s Mullet. And uh, if you go on Liquipedia, I believe they have a lot of build order listings, and he's got his out there too. He likes doing early mech play as well. One Zergling working on that SCV scout probably should get a kill as it's going into that 12 o'clock location. The rest of the five Zerglings, there's that death. The rest of the five Zerglings making their way to the natural expansion. Command center being built, but the factory remains silent for Mighty, comparatively. So I don't know that by the time this command center is going to be built, that he's going to have anything to secure his natural in order to be able to secure his economy. A lot of Zerglings being built otherwise. Creep colony just in case there were vultures being moved out. Still, still sticking to two hatch. Sorry, as I say that, grabbing the third hatchery. Decent Sim City. And Zergling speed has been upgraded. This raw amount of Zerglings does pretty well. And yeah, this is a bit of... I feel like this is a bit of a build order flub here by Mighty. Because he's got that command center finished. He's now got his machine shop just plopping down. He does have an armory in the background. But all sorts of Zerglings pushing up. SCV's having to pull off the line to try to repair this. This could get dangerous very, very rapidly. Two Zerglings down. Is this enough SCV? It doesn't look like it's enough SCVs to repair this. It's going to be close. SCVs group repairing. Now, finally, Agis still going to back off. Not able to break this front. 
expending four Zerglings, which I think was worth it, honestly, to delay that mining time. Command Center still sitting there silently. And the Command Center floating down again with just two Marines to try to defend it with one Goliath. And two Goliaths, two Marines, I don't know that that's, well, three Marines. It's still going to be, the Command Center's going to have to sit there in the air a while. So I guess what I'm saying. Armor 1 upgrading already. He actually built, I think this was a mistake. Mighty's playing a little bit off here. He's already got two armories. I don't think there's any build order where you want two armories this early. So he, not sure what's going on in his brain, but he he's playing a little bit off build order. Three hatcheries are up. Hydralisk Dent is upgrading that Hydralisk speed. We might see a follow-up Hydra Bust attempt with this many Zerglings on the ground. We'll see once that upgrade is finished. If we do see Larva being expended on Hydralisk, yeah, Hydralisk being produced. I think Agistol is going to go for a press again. This time, a bunker is going to be there at least with three Marines in it. No siege tanks. So with some focus fire or some group repair on that bunker, Mighty might be able to defend this. I think he's going to get a spot on this. I'm going to go ahead and take Vision off because he's moving up with these Goliaths. SCVs might want to pull off the line right now, yeah, to get on top of that bunker. Group repairing on that bunker. I think they're in position. That's going to, yeah, Agistol now backing off. Might make a second attempt once he has the rest of the Hydralisks and Hydralisk range. Mighty supply capping himself. Not doing himself any favors as far as build order this time. Level 1 weapons being upgraded with level 2 armor. So he's at the very least, sorry, level 1 weapons, level 1 armor upgrading. So at the very least, he will have a sizable upgrade advantage over his opponent. But it's kind of coming at odd times. Agistol at a decent drone kraut is continuing to push off 3, but has not yet gone up to layer tech. Still a lot of Hydralisks that honestly I don't think is enough with especially with the weapons and armor upgrades coming momentarily. I don't think it's going to be enough with the defense that Mighty's put up thus far to breach this natural expansion. But we'll see. Moving up. Bunker being attacked. SCVs once again coming off the line. The Goliaths are blocking the ability to come across the top. The bunker still stands and the rest of the Hydralisks being wiped out. So good. That was well timed on my part. <laughs> Saying, ah, I don't think that's enough. Particularly with the, the defense there. Aegis securing for himself that 12 o'clock location. Still not upgrading to Lair. Continue to produce some more Hydralis, so it looks like he's just going to stick to Hydra versus Mech, and wow. Five factories for the mid-game. So Mighty, I gotta say, despite a lot of the rough portions of the early build order, I think he's going to be in a good position to push out with the Goliaths here in the mid-game. Hatchery being plopped down at the bottom right-hand corner. Level 1 weapons will complete momentarily. And this is going to be a lot of Goliaths with more support to follow momentarily. And Aegis is... He's got a lot of territory to cover and try to defend. Not that he... I think he's got to be more worried about his main. His natural is he only got a, a single Sunken Colony. Equal numbers of Goliaths, comparatively, to try to defend this. And Mighty is now moving out. Wide Walking Goliaths. And the Hydralis just have to fall back. And I don't think there's... There are... Mu there evolution chambers are being plopped down. For a second there, that looked like Needle's like, When did that happen? I think this is too late for Aegis to defend. He just doesn't have... He didn't have the Larva available. Okay, he's building eight Hydralis now. But honestly, and I do want to see an SCV. This is one thing with this sort of push. I like seeing SCVs here to provide some group repair. Maybe with some focus fire, Aegis can, can box this back. I don't think that's, with what he's got here, though, it's enough. And regardless, what's happening is Aegis is being forced. Well, I take it back. I take it back. My, with this delay and the economy that Aegis has, let's see if he can start saturating. He does have a little bit of saturation there at the 12 o'clock. If he can get the army out to deal with this. Mighty holding this low ground. Might want to back up a little bit to work with that misfire chance. That's a lot of Hydralis, but this is a good amount of Goliaths and a siege tank to re-engage. And there's no SCV to provide that repair support. Overwhelming amount of Hydralis diving down. The siege tank having trouble. It's actually not firing. 
Oh. The just too many Hydralisks pushing through. And now Aegis in a fantastic position. Because when you end up losing that entire first mech army, if you didn't take out if you didn't do significant amounts of damage, you end up in a situation where your Zerg opponent starts being able to drone up, be able to get contains, being able to basically do whatever he wants. Mighty ahead in supply still overall, 80 to 81 to 60, but this 12 o'clock base is producing. Creep Colony's there to defend it. Bottom right hand base is starting to produce. This is a third gas at will for Aegis. He does have Lair Tech now. He's getting a Spire down. No Hydralis aspect, or sorry, no Lurker aspect yet. SCV tr somehow got out here and is looking for scouting information, and the supply count is filling in rapidly for Aegis. And he does have opportunity to drone up, which is what he's doing. 12 o'clock base gets spotted. Mighty does not know about that bottom right-hand corner. And here's the thing, with what he's got... Mighty needs to take out something. Oversaturated at his main. Actually, I think he might have way too many SCVs. Yeah, he's got 50 SCVs. 52 SCVs for two expansions. A little bit much there. Dropship being produced. Maybe a Vulture drop. Some Goliath, something. Might be able to sneak him back in this match. Overlord Speed being upgraded to deal with any sort of mines in the mid-game. Double Evolution Chamber being dropped as well. And now, getting a good view at the Drone Saturation. That third gas finally being taken. Fourth and third and fourth gas being grabbed. Decent Hydralisk Attack Force. The one critical thing here for Aegis is, I don't know... Well, he's got decent vision, actually. I like this. Got some Zerglings, some units just kind of out here. So it's going to be hard for Mighty to weave this dropship through. I lost track of it. But it looks like he's actually... Wow. Is able to do so. Dropship goes undetected, is headed towards that natural expansion. There is a sunken colony there. Might be able to drop at the main. Level 1 armor, level 1 carap... Or sorry, level 1 weapons, level 1 carapace being upgraded. Or claw attack. Hydralis now reacting. Two being dropped off low. Two drones down. And more being dropped off at the main. The drones are being pulled out there, so I don't think they're going to get a lot additionally accomplished. And those mines are not being plopped down in a location where it's going to be, although those Hydralisks sacrificing themselves to that mine line. Very brave of them. Vultures able to sneak up and maybe get some damage. No, not quite able to get anything done on that gas. And while that's happening, Mighty, with that distraction, is pushing out with his second mech, mech attack. And actually has a significant supply lead this time. Another round of Hydralisks being produced. They are out of position, though. And this is plenty of siege tanks to squash these Hydralisks now. And I don't think drop has been upgraded to drop all over that siege tank line. Hydralisks engaging. I don't think this is enough this time. And not a lot of focus fire happening from Aegis. So that Hydralisk line melting. He is half the supply of Mighty now. That's what you want to see. And Mighty now pushing into this natural expansion. Mostly unopposed. Sunken Colony lasts for a blink of an eye. Two hatcheries certainly going to get taken out. And it looks like game three is going to go to Mighty. Hive Tech was about halfway finished. But too little too late. Nine Mutalists being produced. Charm Boosters also being produced. But these Siege Tanks, actually, oh, they're backing out. They're going to go to the 12 o'clock now that those drones are cleared out here. Leaving the hatcheries. Interesting. Mutalists fleeing their way across. A lot of this tech at risk of being taken out. Queen's Nest, Spire, and Hydralist Den all here. That's six Hydralist versus six Goliaths. And with some Focus Fire, which doesn't look like it's happening, but some decent Focus Fire otherwise. Look like that's getting taken out. Vultures making their way across to spot for that siege tank. And that, wow. Yeah, that did not last long. Goliath's getting cleaned up at the main. Only the Queen's Nest lost there. And since Hive Tech's already there, it's not that big a loss. Huge tech switch for Aegis into Mutalisks. And with enough Mutalisks, he might be able to swing this rather rapidly. It looked like that 9 o'clock base 
I'm not sure what that command center was doing. It looks like I missed a counterattack at that 9 o'clock, stopping Mighty from taking additional base. But you just look at the bank that both these players have. Might Mighty has a huge bank. Twice the worker count all of a sudden. Yeah, some tanks are being taken, but as long as Aegis doesn't have a killing blow with these Mutalisks, Mighty should end up winning this game. Need more Goliaths, maybe a science vessel. We do have a science facility. The starport remains silent. Some turrets being built. Good tech switch. And actually might be able to at least get himself some breathing room. Critically, though, he needs to re-drone and micro simultaneously. Two turrets up, but without any additional defense, these SCVs going to try to group prepare. Are able on one turret, not able to do... Well, not able on the second. Goliath's making their way in. The Mutalists not able to take out the command center, only able to get two turrets and actually eating a lot of damage from the rest of these Goliaths, having trouble microing once again. And there's GG from Aegis. So nice attempt by Aegis with the tech switch, but Mighty takes the game down with that second mech push. And you can just see the power of mech from Terran. If you just don't have the bulk to, to crush down on that, they just roll you over. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll move on to game four. Mighty is up 2-1. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.